your tracks now. Hello and welcome to this month's edition of the Raider Sports Report. My name is Peter Warren. Isha Kamdar, my co-host, is off this week. We're going to start off first with Charles Bauer talking to us about the golf team. Hello, Charles. How are you, Peter? So tell us how the season has gone so far. Well, the golf team is 11-3 and three right now. They uh, just won their previous match against Basking Ridge. How are some of the, the golfers on the team performing this year? Uh, Jimmy Harcourt has been a very good performer, as well as Jimmy Bagdonis, uh, the junior, and Andrew Most actually suffered an injury during Olympic volleyball. He happened to sprain his wrist. How'd that affect uh, the team's morale? Um, well, I'm sure the loss of any player will hurt the team. <laughs> What's the team looking forward to uh, accomplishing as the state tournament comes up? Um, you know, they're looking to make a date run in the state, in the state tournament, as uh, any other team would. Uh, Coach Garacy has some high aspirations, and the boys definitely have talent. They can uh, definitely do some damage. Thank you very much, Charles, and nice shirt. Thank we you. Now move, we now move on to Maya Dunches here with the track aspect of track and field. So, Maya, how have the last two meets gone? Um, the boys recently competed in Union County Relay Championships where they had Izu Mosey who plays second in discus and third in shot put and Nigel Nelson who plays first in high jump. Um, this past weekend they competed in Union County Conferences where they had two really outstanding finishes. They had Maddie Weber who plays first in shot put and had a personal record of 37 feet and Izu Mosey who plays second in shot put with a personal record of 50 feet. That's great. And what else are you looking forward to for the rest of the year? Um, this coming weekend they have Union County Championships which is held at Plainfield so they're looking to do well there. Thank you very much Maya. Thank you. Now for some more track and field we have Jack Hosmer. Jack, tell us a little bit about how the team has done the last few weeks. Yeah, so um, recently they competed in county relays, and the boys 4x1600 finished second, while the boys 4x400 four uh, finished eighth, but managed to get their personal best time with sophomore uh, Graham McAlinden uh, performing really well. Uh, have there been any notable storylines so far? Uh, yeah, sophomore Ben Fleischer managed to get his personal best time in the 3200, getting 957 and finishing third in his latest event. And what do they hope to accomplish the rest of the year? Um, yes, yeah, so they have some big meets coming up, and they just plan to uh, get you know do their best in the ones that they perform, and uh, hopefully they can bring in some medals and uh, you know uh, you know beat Westfield hopefully. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you. Now, on to boys lacrosse with the Matt Vignola. So Matt, how has the team performed so far? Uh, the team has, the record uh, doesn't show the quite how good their season has been. Uh, they're not in A right now, but uh, out of those eight losses, six of them have been one goal losses, and the other two were uh, also very close games. Who have been some key performers on the team? Uh, the captains definitely have uh, led the team this year, uh, David Walker, Goalie Riley Guma and Richie Nardone have all been strong performers, uh, good leadership, and there's also a very strong senior class, too, to help out the captains with leadership. State tournament starts this week. What are you hoping to accomplish, and who are some of their main opponents? Uh, well, they have Middletown South tonight, or today, uh, after school, in the first round. Uh, so uh, they're looking to uh, start off the state tournament well. Uh, they have been picked as a uh, dark horse team to win Group 3 by NJ.com, which uh, I guess that's a very good accomplishment for the boys that uh, they're recognize their skill and their talent is recognized from uh, the reporters and stuff. So uh, they have high aspirations. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Now, we're going to go from a girls lacrosse with the coolest kid in town, Aaron Shack. So, Thanks, Aaron, Peter. 
Tell us about the girls across season. Well, the uh, girls haven't done as well as they'd like to this season. They have a 4-11 and record, uh, and they currently sit in fifth place in the Independent South Division. Who are some key players on the team? Uh, well, Sabrina Delolo has been a great attacking player for the girls this season, only a few goals away from a 100 uh, career, uh, and she hopes to reach that this season. And in net, senior Haley Nakanaki has over 80 saves this season alone, so uh, she's done very well as well. Only a few games left. What are they hoping to uh, end the season? How are we going to help to end the season on a high note? Well, they have a couple games remaining against Indian Hills, UC, and uh, watch on Hills. So they like to win those games and finish up as high as they can in the division and go into next year with a strong mentality and a strong finish to the season. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you. And now, as you mentioned, Sabrina Lowe has been very good this year, and she is our Female Athlete of the Month. Welcome back to Female Athlete of the Month. I'm your host, Colin McElinden, and this month's Female Athlete of the Month is junior Sabrina Delello. Sabrina, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, you are a lacrosse player, and uh, you want to tell me a little bit about how you got into the sport of lacrosse? Um, when I, my dad always played lacrosse, like in high school, he loves the sport, so when lacrosse came into town, when I was in second grade, uh, he just automatically enrolled me and my sisters, so I've played ever since I was seven. So. <laughs> Uh, you want to tell me a little bit about how the LAX team is doing this year? Um, we've been playing pretty well compared to last year. However, our record may not show that. Um, we've come really close with a few teams, but we're not able to come out on top. And so what are some uh, key victories that you guys had this year? Um, some key victories was recently against Parsippany Hills. We were able to come out on top as well as in the beginning of the season versus uh, Paramus and Villa Walsh. Very nice. So um, if you had to pick between lacrosse and soccer, which one would you pick? Oh, God. Uh, whenever people ask me that, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I like them both equally, I guess. Gotcha. And uh, do you plan on trying to play either soccer or lacrosse in college? No, I decided not to. Nice. And um, aside from sports and school, like what are your, some of your other interests? interests? Um, I like to just relax and hang out with my friends. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having <laughs> me. <laughs> and uh, this has been your May Female Athlete of the Month. Back to the studio. And I want the Parker, the snake, who sports. So the NBA and NHL are both in the conference finals now. In the NBA, it's not a surprise. The Golden State Warriors and Cleveland Cavaliers have both made it back to the conference finals. The Warriors face off against the Spurs. They have a 2-0 lead right now. The Warriors got there after beating the Portland Trail Blazers by a sweep and then sweeping the Utah Jazz. The Spurs had two 4-2 victories, one over the Houston Rockets in the last round. And in the first round, they beat the Memphis Grizzlies. The Cavaliers have swept their way to the conference finals as well. In the first round, the Cavs beat the Indiana Pacers, and just recently they beat the Toronto Raptors. They face off against the Boston Celtics, who are the one seed in the Eastern Conference. The Celtics beat the Chicago Bulls after going down 2-0 in the series. They won the next four games straight. And they just recently beat the Wizards in seven games. It was a very exciting series. I think that the Celtics have a real chance of upsetting, upsetting the Cavs this year. Uh, hopefully we'll see a different finals. Everyone wants to see the Warriors versus Cavs matchup again in the finals, but if you ask me three years in a row is a bit too much. It's too much of a powerhouse in the NBA. In the NHL, the Predators, Nashville Predators, are going up against the Anaheim Ducks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins are going against the Ottawa Senators. The Penguins and Senators series are is tied 1-1, and the Predators are up 2-1 on the Ducks. The New York Rangers took a hard loss in six games against the Ottawa Senators. And in the MLB, the New York Mets sit at 16-22, surprisingly still in second in the NL East. But cold bats and rough injuries have led the Mets to a really slow start to the year. 
The Yankees are sitting at 23 and 13, and in first in the AL East. Uh, rookie Aaron Judge has come on as a strong hitter and looks like a heavy favorite early in the season for Rookie of the Year. He might even make the All-Star team as a rookie, which is tremendously impressive. Um, and in the NFL, there was recently the NFL draft where the New York Jets, with the sixth overall pick, took Jamal Adams, safety out of LSU. Uh, Adams was projected to go second, but somehow fell to the Jets. And the Giants selected with the 23rd overall pick the tight end out of Ole Miss, Evan Ingram, who uh, is a, a really great catching tight end, but the Giants need more of a blocking side, so we'll see how the pick works out for them, but he seems to be a good fit for the Giants. Maybe if they get some offensive linemen, they'll be really good next season. And now on to Izzy with the Pulse. If you've ever seen something and you just weren't sure it was correct, you may be experiencing the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect was created when people thought that Nelson Mandela died in prison when he actually didn't. So now we go to see some tests to see if the Mandela Effect is really true. I'm here with Bailey Brown. Now Bailey, I'm going to show you some pictures okay. and you're going to tell me which one is the correct picture, okay? So which one's correct here? Looney Tunes or Looney Tunes? Uh, the one on the right. This one? That's wrong. That's a lie. I didn't. I never thought of this. Uh, this one? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Hey! Uh, oh, oh? Uh, no, it's correct. Oh, oh. No, it's UN. Yeah. Oh. Is Looney Tunes spelled with a UN or a double O? Double O? No, it's UN. UN. Correct, correct. Uh, T O O N N. T-U-N-E-S is the correct. T-O-O-N-S is incorrect. Fruit Loops or Fruit Loops? Yes. Fruit? Yes. Yes. You are. No, it's incorrect. Correct. It's actually spelled with a double O. I had... Oh, the O-O. It's the double O. That is, that is correct. Only man have a monocle or no monocle? Pretty sure he doesn't have one. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. No monocle. Correct. No monocle. No. Monocle. Incorrect. He has no monocle. It, does Kit Kat have a dash or not have a dash? Dash. It does not have a dash. No way! No, it has never had a dash. No dash. No dash. Correct. Correct. No dash. Correct. Surprise question from Duran Jeter over here. The Berenstain Bears or the Berenstain Bears? Heard it here, folks. Period 7 8 news. May 1st marked Decision Day. Graduating seniors wore shirts as well as other college apparel to represent where they'll be going to school in the fall. Let's see where some seniors decided to commit to. Today is College Commitment Day. Let's see where people are going to college and why they chose it. I'm here with uh, Joe Nelson. Now, Joe, where are you going to college and why did you choose it? I'm going to Union County College because it's affordable and it's really local. My man. <laughs> I'm here with Dylan Fulton. Now, Dylan, where are you going to college and why did you choose it? I'm going to Virginia Tech because I, uh, I love the community, I love the campus, and it has uh, all the, you know, the courses and majors I'm looking for. Thank you, Dylan. Tech! Okay, say your name and your major. Evan Scharf, Communications. Brian Kenny, Engineering. Sam Venick, Civil Engineering. Are you guys going to plan on living anywhere near each other? Or is it like a really small campus? Um, I mean, they have a bunch of dorms, so we'll probably be in separate ones. 
What, what's the thing that you're most looking forward to about Delaware? Uh, social life, I guess. What about you, Sam? Uh, the civil engineering program, it seemed pretty good when I went. That's awesome. Go Blue Hens. So, Catherine, where are you going to college? I'm going to, <laughs> to Fairfield University in Connecticut. And why did you choose Fairfield University? Um, I don't know. I just like loved the feeling when I got there, and they have like a really good education program. So, you're majoring in, in education? Yes, elementary education. And what's your mascot? My mascot is a stag. Go stags! <laughs> Here with Ben Mazin. Now, Ben, where are you going to college, and why did you choose it? Going to Westchester University. Uh, it's right outside of Philly. And I chose it because of not only the location, but it's a class of 18,000 people, which makes it like a moderate size. It's not too big, not too small. As well as they gave me one of their scholarships that has no GPA requirement. I just have to continue to go to Westchester and do my best and be involved with the community. Thank well, con yeah, congratulations, Ben. Thank you. Okay, so you both are going to USC. Why did you choose USC? USC has been my dream school since August of 2016. Uh, it's a school that has everything, school spirit, academics, student life parties, everything. It's so much fun. I cannot wait. It has a lot of top ranked programs, especially for journalism, which I, I'm going for. Um, I definitely love the student life and it's warm. It's always sunny in LA. There's nothing that you can miss out in LA. And plus business school is really good too. That's awesome. Best of luck. Go, Go Trojans! Trojans. <laughs> Sean. Yes. What's your mascot? Scarlet Knight. Go Scarlet Knights. Yeah. Alright, I'm here with Stephanie Judge. Now Stephanie, where are you going to college and why did you choose it? I'm going to UMass Amherst and I chose it because I really liked the team and I really liked the coach and I could see myself being successful there. Thank you. You're welcome. Man. I'm here with Peter Yerm, who is going to Susquehanna University, and Peter is also a collegiate athlete. So tell us about what you're doing and what you're looking forward to. Uh, I'm really excited to go uh, to school at Susquehanna. Um, I'm going to continue on my baseball career there as well and uh, hopefully study uh, marketing. So why did you choose marketing? Um, it's just a really broad major that I could do a lot with. I'm not sure what I want to do exactly yet, but I just know that um, it's a very creative major and it can allow me to uh, go to any business and really um, develop some designs and concepts for advertising is what I'd mostly do. And um, I don't know, I just really like it. It's something easy and um, it allows a very wide range of opportunities for myself. Where is Susquehanna? Uh, it's in West PA, uh, heading towards Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Um, so it's not too far, about three hours away from home. So it's That's not too bad. Far enough away at the same time. And what division league is uh, Susquehanna Baseball? Uh, division three. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this month's edition of the Rare Sports Report. I'm Peter Warren for Izzy and Parker. Have a good night and a better tomorrow. Okay. And now on to the sports. That's true. Well done. That was Thank you. truly excellent.